I miss playing Danganronpa. And there's really not a lot out there that can really satisfy that Danganronpa need. Um, but there is one game. There's one game that I've always wanted to play on my channel, and I really want it to work. Two years ago, we played a game called Ace Attorney on the channel. It didn't really get all that many views, so I figured people like weren't that interested in it. So I said, screw that. I'm gonna re-upload that video, and we're gonna see if it does better. I've been requested to play this game a lot of times, especially when I was playing Danganronpa, so I figured it's time. Let's freaking do this. So it's time to use all these Danganronpa brains to solve the mysteries. Now let's jump back to me two years ago. Welcome officially to Ace Attorney. Let's get this started. Episode one, the first turnabout. My lawyer eyes are lawyering all of the time right now. Dang it, why me? <laughs> why did I take so long to read that? I can't get caught, not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Wow, it looks so much better. Someone like him. See guys, okay, uh, I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hey, Chief. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I said something about this girl at some point in the beginning. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. You know, I'm glad I became a lawyer, as you can plainly see by my attire, okay? I'm just saying, like, right, you hire me, you're gonna get out of that auto accident, okay? <laughs> just imagine me, I'm on the billboards. I'm on the billboards in your town. I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. My client is none of your business, okay? Um, thanks. If you thought my lawyer skills were impressive already and we just started, I've seen Liar Liar like five times, okay? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an eternity. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. Aren't you not supposed to know people that you work with like that beforehand? I don't know. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Oh god, is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Death despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Uh. Nick! Hey! Hi there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty! Why? Okay, I'm not actually a very competent lawyer, all right? You, you're making this very difficult for me. Objection! I just scream random words and it just works. Give me the death sentence. I'm a, I ain't afraid to die. What? Nani? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. Finished, I tell you. I can't live in a world without her. I just can't. Who? Who took her away from me? Nick? Who did this? Oh, and there's Butts. <laughs> okay, so this is Mr. Butts. Oh, God. Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took away my baby? Did Karen take away the kids? <laughs> mm -hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say, oh, it was you. Oh, crap. Her oh, dang. His girlfriend did die. Okay, so we got a clue right there already, all right? My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Oh, that must suck. His girlfriend died. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. I have my hands in my pockets. You just can't see. Oh, I have little pockets right here. We will crack this case today. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school has a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butt. <laughs> in the 23 years I've known him, uh, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I could say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, he's a good guy at heart, okay? The Butts is a good guy, all right? And that I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Wouldn't that make the lawyer biased? I'm just saying, okay? I'm not a lawyer or anything. I mean, I am. Oh, here we go. This is what I live for here. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh, so this is his first case. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I am a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Uh, thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> 
hands shaking, eyesight's fading. My hands are sweaty, but it is because I have a 50,000 lights on me, okay? The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is the test, right? I'm pretty sure it's to be a Faye, all right? Because she's on my brain. <laughs> Look, I need some stupid poo, poo head, all right? I know it's Larry Butts, okay? The defendant, well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Uh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report on it to cover it so many times. <laughs> it's, wait, uh, uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! <laughs> Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? I'm sorry? <laughs> Sorry, just, just, I'm just noticing how fly I look right now. You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim, uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, I just forgot temporarily, okay? I think I feel a migraine coming on. Uh, look, the victim's name is listed on the court record. Just press tab to check it anytime. I knew that, hey, they, they taught me that in law school. Wait, what'd they ask? <laughs> Did they ask for the, uh, prosecutor? No? <laughs> well, Winston and Cindy is all we really need to know, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Oh. Oh, you should have said something. Okay, so Cindy Stone, age 22. Poor girl, man. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me what the cause of death. She died because she was... Okay, I don't even have to look this one up, okay? She was hit with a blunt object, okay? She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what they do in uh, courtrooms. You know, because I've been in there. Um, multiple choice questions of simple details. <laughs> no, thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed. Well then, first, a question for the prosecutor, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with the butt object. Object. <laughs> Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was Stefano. <laughs> Is that not freaking Stefano? It looks just like him. All right, I I'm an old PewDiePie fan. If you guys couldn't tell, okay. The Thinker. Oh, okay. So it's it's close. <laughs> not actually, not even. <laughs> but I think you see what I was going for, right? It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. Uh, he just had a voice change. Uh, I see. The court accepts it is into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this voice stuff up. Probably not. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence adding during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. <laughs> um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Yeah, this is horrible. He's horrible. He looks, he looks like he's calm, though. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Answer the question, please. Hey, watch it, but... <laughs> Come on, dude. You gotta help me out here, right? I barely went to, like, one minute of school, okay? We were great together. We... We're Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. <laughs> uh, did they all, didn't they all die? <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> that's freaking hilarious. It wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. <laughs> What's it mean you anyway? Oh, so we got dumped by her. Oh, dang, and that would make him seem more guilty. He's just digging a hole. <laughs> Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what you mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely ab abandoned you and was seeing other men. <laughs> She just had returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? I kind of feel sorry for the butts, though, you know? Lies! All of it's lies! I don't believe a freaking word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Of course it would be romantic. Passport added. Oh, it's okay. Part of the record. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Honor. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddy. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> but don't worry, guys. With the power of love and justice, we will solve this. Daddy's sugar? <laughs> yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. 
dude, we can clearly see that kind of woman that, that Mrs. Stone is. Or Miss Stone is. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. I call for a recess. Should I? Uh, oh god. Ooh. Oh, so okay, this is the great thing uh, about visual novels. We get the pick. Okay. He's definitely gonna say something stupid. He's literally already basically ruined the entire case. So let's stop him from answering. <laughs> oh, putting her foot down. Objection, your honor. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. <laughs> oh. Oof. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Beat you, lawyer. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating cheat dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I met her in the afterlife, uh, wait, or when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to anyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh... Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and <laughs> maybe I did, huh? Nobody knows. Uh-oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Okay, so I feel at this point, uh, we can stop him from answering, but, you know, this is a simple question. If we stop him from answering, it's gonna look suspicious, so let's have him answer honestly because, you know, there's gotta be some honesty. I know, I'll send him a signal. <laughs> Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I was there, I went. Because, uh, you know, he's just saying the truth. Order. Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. <laughs> you don't tell the judge to chill. She wasn't home, man, so I, like, I didn't see her. Oh, God, oh, no. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Oh, no, oh, no. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Oh my god. This is so- this is interesting for me. This is- I don't even remember any of this though. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawitz to the stand. Oh, I remember this guy. <laughs> Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes! <laughs> you remind me of the guy from Zelda. Oh! Newspapers, yes? Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Ooh, witness testimony. Okay, so we're going into another phase here. Okay, so we gotta pay attention. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw the man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange. I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I think, I mean, he's, wouldn't he be a uh, freaking suspect though? I quilled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt defendant sitting right over there. I mean, look at him. He's doing this. He's, I don't know what that is. Tell me right now that you've watched an anime and the freaking main villain didn't smile just like that. Objection, I've seen anime, your honor. I've seen enough Naruto to know that that is Orochimaru. I see no problems with my statement. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Uh, incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, however, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw would use was one of those. Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your per 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 perusal. <laughs> now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yeah, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. All right, right, this is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies. What, he was lying? <laughs> He was? <laughs> your client is innocent, right? Then the, then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? <laughs> you hold the key. It is in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. 
First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record. Okay. Alright, I got it. I got it. I'm taking you down to Rochimaru! I'm saving the Hokage today! I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Okay, let's get into lawyer mode, alright? I thought he must be in a hurry. He left the door half open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her there, a woman not moving, dead. I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Wait a minute. Did she just- he just said he didn't go inside. Ooh, I got something. He was unable to go inside, so that's already something, okay? Okay, can we- can we already start- hold it! Oh, I didn't read the whole thing. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, you thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? Oh, so we can just stop in the middle. So we press tap to present evidence. Okay, okay, well, it's actually- we can actually- we need to- we want to read this. Blackout record. Electricity to Mrs. Stone's building was from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. So noon to 6 p.m. We gotta remember that. However, the phone in her and the apartment wasn't working. He could not possibly know that if he didn't go in there. I wish I had a gavel right now. I'd slam it on my toes. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Wait a minute. Hold it! <laughs> Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at uh, the nearby apartments. Oh, it, middle of the afternoon, you say, Mr. Sawitz. Okay, that checks out. It was in the noon time. All right, what time did you call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay, that checks out. Okay, we have to object it right now. Hold it. This is the one I want to hold it on. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no. Nothing. Oh, see? See? I wrote you, Mario, you little snake. I got you. <laughs> okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. No, no, we want to go back. Okay. See, this is it. This is it. All right. I think I'm getting the hang of this. The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no. No, it wasn't, right? <laughs> but you said you didn't go into the apartment, did you? Oh, oh, that. I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. That is... <laughs> you said... No, no, no. You said... No. No. I, I smell poo-poo. Okay? I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? All right, okay. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. But wait a minute. The time of death was 4 p.m. The 5 p.m. Are you saying that she bled out for that long? I don't think so. I would like to present this evidence, Your Honor. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly is that evidence and statement now related? Oh. Oh. Okay, so you need to be real specific. Okay. They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please take the facts over before making accusations. I don't think that one made any points to the judge. Okay, so we lost some of, some of our life here. I find the time to be very suspicious. This is where I'm presenting the evidence. You found the body at 1 p.m.? You sure, right? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. It clearly says right here, right here, that you clearly are wrong. <laughs> the autopsy notes the time of death uh, sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, to nobody to find at 1 p.m. <laughs> How do you explain this three hour gap, huh? Ooh, some sweating I see, huh? Very, very, uh, uncanny. Oh, that, uh, um, uh, oh, well, let's see what you got, dude. Bring it on. This is trivial. The witness really forgot the time. Oh, oh, but the sweat says otherwise. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawitz, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. It's very true. Very true. It's harder to lie, honestly. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh, now he's gonna change things. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, sure. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m., you see? Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. That is about the sorriest excuse I've ever seen. 
Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Okay. Okay, so he says he heard the time. What kind of evidence do we have to uh, negate this? Okay. Okay, time of death. It's not really... Okay. Okay, I don't know. So far, I don't see the evidence that would suggest otherwise. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. But the power was out! Holy crap! <laughs> Freaking Jackson! Hold it! Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? I'm surprised the judge didn't get this. How stupid can you be, judge? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. Oh, wow. Well, way to go. You could have got away with the radio because some radios are battery powered, but there are no battery powered TVs. There are, but no one has any. There was only one, only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. I know. You gotta listen to me, huh? Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. Oh, did I not do it on the right one? Okay, I'll object this one. Hold it. Hold it, mister. A video. Yes, that would explain why the time is wrong. True, true. Right. I think the problem lies someplace else. I know it doesn't. I want to say it, but it won't let me. Oh, wait. Is there like, okay. Oh, no, no, no. The power outage. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, I, I, okay. So you just got to present that. All right, all right. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Oh, 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 I'm getting money today. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I will, uh... The defense has a point. You do? Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawitz? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. No way. <laughs> the court would prefer to hear the accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. <laughs> and that, you see, rather distraught. <laughs> ah, my, my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, it, it uh, might have been a shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawin. Let's hear your testimony one more time, please. Okay, let's, okay, I'll just let him spew his garbage, okay? Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table <laughs> Okay, so it was the TV with the phone first. Now it's the TV. Oh, well, could have been a radio, but no, no, it was not. It was, it was a clock. But you heard it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Oh, believe me, please. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. No, you're not actually believing this. You're not actually... He's saying the table clock was the murder weapon. It's not even a clock, is it? It's a statue. I mean, it could be a clock, but it doesn't say that it's a clock, so I'm presenting that. Wait, just a darn diddly moment, okay? The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah, uh, you with your objections and your evidence. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawitz. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it does look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. <laughs> I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is the clock. Have you tested it? Don't you, wouldn't you do that? Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Uh, yeah. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Oh, clearly a contradiction indeed. Hmm. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment, of course. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. <laughs> Imagine if I was actually in a courtroom. <laughs> you struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Oh, so it actually is the clock. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawitz, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Do you just say baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Uh, uh, 
Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day, I never... Look, I, the clock, I heard no, I, ah. <laughs> oh, he's bald! <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. <laughs> Give him death. Well, he said to do it. <laughs> Order! Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor. You claim the sound witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock. Uh, oh, examine the clock's batteries. Ooh. Ooh. I, does it say anything about that? I don't think it says anything about it, does it? Examine the clock's batteries. Well, I, I think, okay, so I think that would be second after trying to sound the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? This is freaking interesting. I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. It certainly is a strange way to announce the time. <laughs> what? Oh, so literally said, I think it's 825. Well, he is the thinker after all. Freaking puns, man. So we've heard the clock. What's your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 1125. Ah, as you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Oh my God, it's still the same time that it was at. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sawit heard and actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawitz, try to talk your way out of this one. You forgot one thing. Uh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How did you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? The black, because the, the times you announced. If you can't prove that, then you, we don't have a case. He's right. What, how am I going to prove that? Dang it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, you're right. No, I don't. Right? No. Am I supposed to pre present it now? No, I can't present it. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, no, no. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawyer. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Don't you say that. Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I felt you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Really? Is that really how it goes? Not so fast, Mr. Sawitz! Oh, Mia! Mia spoke up! Mia, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this, think! But Chief, it's over! I can't- I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the fact. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think it through. Ask yourself. Why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Wait, maybe I can prove it. Okay, all right, let's do this. Okay, all right, I, we gotta figure this out. So, we know the power went out, right? And he stated it was at 1 p.m. She died at four. Now, obviously the clock could go without electricity. This is what we all know. But I have a feeling that somehow the passport can be something of value in this situation. Let me ask you guys something. When you travel, when you travel across countries, what happens? Just, just, uh, just humor me for one second. What happens when you travel across countries? Would you say that the time is different? Huh? And I would also like to argue that maybe she enjoys having her thinker clock around. So therefore, she had her time set to Paris time, and she just simply forgot to change it back. Okay? So, Your Honor, I would like to present the passport, please. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris- Oh wow, I actually freaking guessed about that. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard was you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit, or should I say Mr. Did It? <laughs> oh, I just realized that's what his freaking name meant. <laughs> oh, he's got rabies. Your Honor, he does not have his shots. 
Order! I say, well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected, Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and been, he's been taken away, Your Honor, <laughs> already. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone completely complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And that, I rest my case. The butts is free. And with that, this court is adjourned. Wow, I forgot how freaking amazing this game actually is, guys. All right, it's time to take off the lawyer glasses. Uh, <laughs> And it's actually extremely hot in here. That was super fun. Guys, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like down below. If you followed along and you enjoyed as much as I did, I would love to continue this series if you guys wanted to because we haven't done a long series in a while. And it would be cool to do something like this. And uh, also, I've just always wanted to play this game. So, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.